This is a screencast about PyLint, a code analysis tool for Python. It can check errors, can check against coding standards, and even suggest refactorings. So it's a command line tool. So we type PyLint and then the name of the file, in this case test.py, hit return, and it runs and produces a bunch of output. So the first part here, um, it tells us about things it doesn't like, so some warnings, uh, is W, capital C here is coding convention violations, R is for any things it thinks could be refactored, um, and then the last thing it tells us about is an E for error, um, and it goes on to do some reporting tables. Um, interesting here, um, number of messages in each of the categories that I mentioned. Um, this one's useful, message ID, so you can take this ID and look it up on the web to see what it actually means, and you can also use this ID to um, disable some of the messages. We'll see that later. That gives me a score for my code. Minus six and a quarter out of ten is not very good at all, obviously. Um, then tells us about the type of things it's seen, number of modules, classes, and so on. And then a uh, proportion of the lines which were actually actual executable, some that were doc strings, proportion that were comments, and so on, which again are useful metrics. However, if all we really want to see um, are the things at the top, warnings and so on. You don't want to see any reports. We use the minus R flag. Minus R and N will turn off reports. Um, so then all we get this time are, as I said, the warnings and errors. And if for the moment all we want to see are the errors, because they're the most serious, we will use minus capital E and then run that on test.py and all you get are the errors. Obviously you could deal with those and then take that away. Um, I said one thing we can disable messages, so use the minus D and then give the message number C. In that case, it was C0103. Uh, hit return. We don't get any reports and we don't get any warnings about naming convention violations. We can put all that together now by creating a configuration file. So that's minus minus generate RC file uh, and then we pipe that or redirect that into pylint.cfg as an example um, and then we can use that configuration file with minus minus rc file and type the name pylint.cfg and apply that to test.py and there we are same results as before and obviously we can keep on using that we can set up the configuration file and use it over and over again You'll see more about PyLint at www.pylint.org. Thanks for listening.